A while ago, I made a video on this GameCube controller right here. It was our favorite controller for the GameCube growing up, and it's still one of my favorite aftermarket controllers ever. It's ugly as sin and beat to hell because I used it a lot. But if you flip this switch right here, the fan turns on and air flows through the grips and suddenly those sweaty games of Melee or Ribbit King aren't so sweaty anymore. At least that would happen if this thing was plugged in. It's not plugged in. I'm a little upset that it's so beat up or else I would use it for Smash Ultimate today. And it's hard to find one of these that's in near perfect condition. It's always missing one of the thumbstick rubbers or, or something. And that's what that video was about. But it's been about a year and a half since that video and I still get messages from time to time, people showing me eBay listings for this controller or showing me their own controller. And even the eBay listings always have the missing thumbstick grip. But it seems to have gotten the attention of Nyko. Yes, I am taking full responsibility for this new controller. This is the Nyko Air Glow controller. This one is brand new for the Nintendo Switch. It's a wired controller with RGB lights and a fan in it. And it's unironically my favorite wired pro controller alternative right now. I promise I'm not just saying that because I'm a sweaty man, but I am a sweaty man. Oh, would you look at that? It looks like our buddy Hero over there could have used a little something to enhance his performance. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. Listen, if you're under 18, just tap the right side of the screen until you pass this part. But if you're over 18, just come over, come over here for a second. Let's let's talk about your penis. Come here, look. Almost every man is gonna have to deal with it at some point in their life. Sometimes you just lose your mana. <laughs> get, get it? Cause because I'm a gamer. So if you haven't already, chances are you're going to have to do something about it eventually. So instead of going to the doctor and dropping your pants, you could just go to GetRoman.com slash WolfDen. There you'll get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED and $15 off your first order of ED treatment. Roman will ship you real medicine right to your door with free two-day shipping. It's simple, straightforward, and discreet. So you don't even have to tell your partner what changed. You could just tell them it was their great tuna casserole or something. That's GetRoman.com slash WolfDen to get $15 off your first ED treatment, a free online evaluation, and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash W-U-L-F-F-D-E-N. And thank you, Roman, for helping support this channel and letting me say these things. <laughs> Even though I loved the original, I didn't have high expectations for this thing. I mean, the idea sounds like a novelty. It's a controller with a fan in it. How good could it be? And the packaging doesn't help sell me on the idea either. But when I held it in my hand, I was a little taken back by how solid it felt. The plastic is hard and the buttons are clicky. It's a good feeling controller. The original airflow was massive by comparison because it needed to fit the fan and have enough room for the air to flow through it. And it has everything a normal wired switch controller has. It has good vibrate that you can see through the crystal clear acrylic shell, which is pretty cool looking. The vibrate is supposed to be adjustable, but I didn't really feel like it was adjusting anything when I tried it. It comes with a 10 foot USB cable, which you love to see. The thumbsticks feel really solid and it's got a nice D-pad. You might notice it has a lot of buttons in the middle in a very strange Y configuration. Oh, I just realized why it's a Y. It's, it's a fan. It's like a little fan symbol. That's not a Y. Cause it's, cause, cause it's got a fan in it. <laughs> it has two additional buttons than a normal controller has. One is for turning the fan on and off. Holding it for five seconds will adjust the fan speed. There are only two speeds, normal and high. 
the normal fan speed is enough to keep your hands noticeably cooler without being too loud. High is for those real sweaty matches, but uh, it's a little obnoxious. Oh. All right, now we're, now we're gaming. Only use this if you're wearing headphones and there's no one around to annoy with your loud ass controller. The fan button isn't just the fan button, it's also the turbo button, which could be applied to any button on this controller, except for the buttons in the middle, in the little Y configuration, or the D-pad. So it can even be applied to the stick clicks, L3 and R3, so you can rapidly teabag people in Rogue Company. You have to hold the fan button and the button you'd like to be turboed. There is no indication that the button has been turboed and the fan button still operates as a fan button. So you have to turn it back on when you're done inputting the turbo. To erase the turbo, just repeat the process. You could also erase turbo on all buttons in case you applied it to multiple buttons by pressing plus, minus and down on the D-pad at the same time. If you can remember all that. You can also adjust the speed of the turbos by holding the fan button and up or down on the D-pad. There are only two speeds, 10 presses per second or five presses per second. Turbo is a cool option for something like Animal Crossing. If you wanna spam pick up items or you wanna spam hit a tree or something, but that's not why you're here for this controller. You're here because it has a fan in it. It also looks really bizarre, partly because it has a fan in it and vents and stuff, but also because it has RGB lights in it. How else would you know that this is a gamer product for gamers? The second additional button we were talking about is the light button. There are two different light configurations, slowly fading through the rainbow and this horrible demo mode. I think you could just pretend like there's only one light mode. Mine has been flickering weirdly sometimes. I think it has a hard time handling power for the fan, the lights, and the vibration at the same time. It only seems to be happening on the lower fan setting, which is weird. So I was sent one Airglow controller from Nyko, but I also purchased one on my own because I forgot. But this one doesn't have the problem with the weird flickering. So maybe it was a pre-production issue and they sent me a pre-production model. I don't know, but... Uh, it's not happening with all of them. It's a manufacturer variance issue, as far as I can tell, unless I dropped it and broke it. I think leaving it on the normal default fan setting is just fine. It's enough to make my hands feel noticeably cooler, and it's quiet enough to not be a problem. So I'm sure a lot of you are asking, why is this even necessary? I've talked to many people about this, and it seems like mostly a me problem. But when I'm playing a super intense game like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate or even some Mario Maker levels, my hands get so ridiculously sweaty. So much so that when we do like sweaty Smash Bros. tournaments or something, sometimes I will put a hand towel on my desk for in between matches. So much so that my controllers get this weird sort of gunk on them. And I think what that gunk is, is the water evaporating away from my sweat and leaving a salty residue. Have you thrown up yet? <laughs> the moral of this story is that if you ever come over my apartment, just don't touch any of my controllers. Even just the normal fan setting solves that problem for me. The airflow is enough to go all around my palms, even up towards my fingers, which is kind of amazing considering how small of a controller this is, especially compared to the original. I'm kind of interested in what the inside of this controller would look like, but then I gotta get a screwdriver, I gotta open it up, and then I'd probably break it trying to put it back together, and I don't wanna do that, I like this controller. That's why John from Sparway is gonna do it. John, open this bitch up. So now that Bob has told you all about how good or bad this controller is, my job is to take a look inside of it because he told me that there is an actual fan in here. I, maybe he thought he was gonna catch me off guard with that, but 
I remember a PlayStation 2 controller I used to have that had a fan inside that was supposed to make it so that your hands wouldn't sweat when you were using it. It didn't last very long because the fan inside stopped working after a little while, but I figure technology's advanced at least a little bit since the early 2000s, so let's take a look inside of Nyko's Air Glow controller. What's really funny is this fan is probably about the same size as the fan that's in the Switch itself. Fortunately, they didn't go with anything weird in terms of screws on the back. It's just eight Phillips head screws, so we don't have to deal with torque screws or anything like that. The interesting thing about this controller is instead of the back coming off after you unscrew it, it looks like after you take all of those screws out and you can see it goes all the way through here, this kind of this clear acrylic faceplate comes off of it. And then after fighting with the trigger a bit, this will pop right off. And what you end up having essentially is kind of this clear plastic shell that goes around the actual controller here. That way, if you have lights that are kind of emanating from this, the RGB, this will work to kind of diffuse it and push it all the way around the controller you're using. So now we can flip it over here and we have access to our fan. And yeah, this reminds me very much of the fan that's in the Switch. It's not the exact same, but in terms of size, it's, it's pretty close to be honest. So I removed the screws here from the fan and one unfortunate part that I'm noticing is they didn't use any type of like rubber grommet around this. A lot of times you will see uh, different posts that hold fans down with rubber around it and that will just kind of absorb the vibration. But now I can remove this, the back comes off, the fan sticks in here and it is seemingly replaceable, I guess, if you absolutely had to. It just plugged in, it's it's not necessarily soldered to the board itself. Then on the other side, we have stiff rubber membranes for all of the buttons, and we can see LED lights all over the place. All these like white squares right here are LEDs, and they're even marked on top of each one. Joystick is reminiscent of something like an Xbox One controller, although it seems to be a little looser, and the D-pad itself is on a separate board that's soldered to the main board. That way, it is raised up slightly to help out. In fact, a quick look at the D-pad itself. It does have kind of a raised middle there, and the idea of that is to try to help out with any extra button presses when you're using it to have kind of that pivot in the middle. You can also notice like this frosted plastic on the inside here. You won't necessarily see that from the other side, but again, that will just help to diffuse and eliminate any extra light spots that all of these RGB lights would create. As for how they're creating kind of the airflow, this appears to be pulling air in through the back and we can see it would be pushing it out through either side here or here. And then we have our grips kind of with all of the different holes here that sit above that where your hands would go. That way there is space between this larger hole and then your hands when you press down. I mean, the controller is not airtight as it is, so air will be able to escape through different spots like different screw holes and even back through the fan itself if it needs to. But that'll conclude our little tour inside of the Air Glow controller. Interesting idea, of course, to have a fan inside of the controller and something I didn't think I would see leaving the early 2000s going now into 2021. But what can you say? Nyko's trying some interesting things right now. Hey, thanks, John. Personally, I've never even seen a screwdriver before in my life, so I'm glad that you're you're still around to do that. While we're still being technical here, the thumbsticks have dead zones, but they're very close to the edge. I just thought it was worth noting. It's just before the edge of the stick box, which isn't a big deal. The sensitivity feels just fine, and the input lag is on par with other comparable wired controllers, even with the fan and lights on. You know, it's unfortunate because this controller solves a really big, disgusting problem for me. And on top of that, it's actually a really good and really comfortable controller. The problem is that personally, I only really get sweaty during games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Mario Maker and even Meat Boy, platformers like that. But for those games, I prefer to use a GameCube controller for Smash Brothers. I prefer to use the SN30 Pro Plus for platformers like Mario Maker and Meat Boy because of the D-pad placement. So personally, I'm, I'm not gonna use this for games that I get super sweaty in. It's just the circumstances. Maybe if Bowser's Fury ends up being super intense, I just don't see myself sweating over any 3D games on the Switch that require this sort of layout. Maybe when Apex Legends come out, this might be a good controller for that. This isn't really their fault. This is the more common layout for most people to play most Switch games. It's just that personally, the guy who really needs something like this, I 
only really ever use these two controllers for 90% of my gameplay, and it's because of their layout, not because of anything else. Oh my god, I could see the salt on this controller. I desperately need it for GameCube more than anything else. So, I love it, but I wish it was easier to find the old GameCube ones. That one still holds a place in my heart, not just because I grew up with it, but because it's still useful for Smash. At least it would be if it wasn't so beat up or I could find a pristine one. This thing don't even work. What do you guys think about the Nyko Air Glow controller for the Nintendo Switch? It also works on PC, which I haven't tried because why would I do that? It's also $40. I should have mentioned that it's $40, which is up there for a wired controller, especially considering that the PDP face-off controller is only 25 bucks. So this is on the higher end of wired controllers. But again, you're not going to get a fan in any other controller. And if you're Gross like me, this really helps out. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all of this social media garbage if you got anything to say about this. Of course, we got new videos at least once a week here on this channel. We also have youtube.com slash wolfden podcast and youtube.com slash wolfden clips if you want to see some gameplay, a little something like Meat Boy. And we got streams over on twitch.tv slash wolfden if you want to hang out live and talk to me live. I'm probably there right now. I stream every day where I post a video. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help us out is just subscribe to the channel and make sure you're subscribed because a lot of you think that you are, but you're just using the homepage. And share this video with a friend. A friend who you can just speculate has salty, sweaty hands. Thank you very much. Have a good week.